My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. Other people want to make friends. I'm just trying to make you some money. My job, not just to entertain, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. The rotation out of the Magnificent Seven and into lots of other areas continued today. I say get used to it because it could be with us for the whole month of December, given the tremendous excitement it's generating among new investors who want to buy the stocks of companies that sell things they like and make things they use. And that's how you get the longest weekly winning streak for the Dow Jones Industrial Average in two years. Today, jumping 295 points just today, S&P gaining 0.59%, NASDAQ advancing 0.55%. That's right, the buyers are broadening out, and they seem to be focused on anything that hasn't had much of a year until this week. Down and out retailers, stocks hurt by the weight loss drugs like fast food companies, and makers of sugary snacks, even manufacturers, their stocks are all running. And you know what? I think it makes a lot of sense. We're in the most sensational of moments when the Federal Reserve is debating whether to stop its rate hikes. We get snippets from them every day. Today, Fed Chairman Jay Powell gave you that kind of mixed message that represents the current zeitgeist. There won't be any rate cuts anytime soon. But then again, there might be no more rate hikes either because inflation's been tamed. So what makes this such a special moment? Simple. We want the yield curve to do the talking, not the Fed. As long-term interest rates go down and they fell again today, it gives the Fed more leeway to cut short rates. See, long rates are reacting to a slower economy and a weaker dollar. That's just fine. Honestly, I wouldn't want to hear Powell say that the Fed's willing to cut rates very soon because then people would instantly assume that something catastrophic was about to happen with the economy. Right now, we've got a Goldilocks situation going here, an economy not too hot, not too cold. So with long rates falling, the money will continue to flow into stocks, but not stocks that have already run up big. The new winners are stocks that can roar because the Fed will eventually cut rates. That's enough to motivate those on the sidelines who don't want to miss out on the action, but don't really want to buy stocks that have already read. Their mantra, let's go buy the downtrodden, the forgotten, and even, yes, the riskiest of equities, which I covered just last night. Many of those stocks soared today. With that in mind, let's go to our game plan for next week. Now, a long time ago, when I worked as a full-time journalist, I learned to never bury the lead. This market is fueled not by earnings, but by interest rates. And next Friday, we get the great rate arbiter, the non-farm payroll reports. If unemployment finally goes to 4%, up from the threes, and we see no wage increases to speak of, then you can bet interest rates will keep falling. I know it sounds strange to talk about this crazy moment with two, year, two wars raging, a turbulent presidential election cycle just around the corner, and somehow halcyon. But it's a great time for the market. As long as there's some slack in the labor force and wages don't shoot up, you need to think positively about a great many stocks that seem untouchable a few months ago, like the ones that crushed it today, and some that I'm about to go over right now. Of course, it, would, it wouldn't hurt to get some ambiguous economic numbers, like durable goods, right, on Monday? I think a negative reading actually propels the market higher. On Tuesday, we hear from the from NEO. Now, this is a Chinese electric vehicle maker that strikes fear into the hearts of all automakers, save Tesla, because Elon Musk obviously fears nothing, for better or worse. Their cheap cars could crush us if they are allowed to come into our country. It's worth watching. We also get results from Signet Jewelers. You know, that's the parent of Kay and uh, Jared. Now, I am a huge fan of CEO Jen Drosos, and her stock hit a 52-week high today. Does Signet deserve it? We'll see. But close followers of the show know that I am a believer. I've been with Drosos all along. I'm not stopping now. Few stocks have willed themselves higher via buybacks than AutoZone, ACO, the auto parts retailer that shrunk its share count from 27.5 million to 17.7 million in just six years. That's how a company with decent earnings can take its stock from 600 to 2,600 over that same period. Look at that, will you? Nice. Next, right now, we're seeing the recovery of stocks crushed by the onslaught of those new weight loss drugs from Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk. One of the biggest losers, J.M. Smucker, which had the misfortune of buying Hostess, maker of Twinkies, right before the headlines made it sound like junk food is dead. Can they change the narrative? Well, we got to find out. Tuesday night, 
brings us numbers from Toll Brothers, the high-end home builder that's one of my absolute favorite companies. It's one of the great conundrums of this moment. Housing remains incredibly strong despite mortgage rates more than doubling in a very short period of time. There just aren't enough homes being built and mortgage rates are now headed down. Nirvana for Toll. At the same time, we are from a company called MongoDB. It's a database software company with a stock that's been roaring in this recent rally. It's now up 121% for the year. Guess what? I bet it delivers another excellent quarter. Wednesday morning, okay, I'm rooting for Campbell's. Campbell's Soup to come up with a mm -mm good number, in part because it sure didn't last time. Now, I know people think I'm hard on the FTC, but back in August, Campbell's Soup announced it was buying Sovos Brands, its parent uh, company of the popular Rayo's pasta sauce, for $2.7 billion. Unbelievably, the FTC has held up this tiny deal asking for more information. And something that should have closed pronto is now delayed to mid-2024. Perhaps the geniuses at Cigna and Humana who are thinking of merging should take note that the FTC won't even let a soup company merge with a pasta company, for heaven's sake. Sorry, the whole thing's insane. Now, we've seen lots of full-price retailers report good numbers. Think Macy's, Foot Locker. How about off-price? Is that now passe? There's nothing more off bargain than off price than Ollie's bargain outlets. Mine in Quaker Town is killer. It can be a great barometer to see if buyers have moved on to full price. Now, after the close, there's Chewy, which was the bell of the pet ball not that long ago, but it's been in the doghouse of late. I think the selling may be overdone, but I still prefer Amazon. Attention, memesters! You're idle. You're idle. Yes. Ryan Cohen, CEO of GameStop, will report numbers. And all we can hope is that he actually says something of substance. Now, though, if GameStop blows away the meager estimates, the laconic Cohen won't have to say anything. He can just tweet an ice cream cone emoji. Thursday's going to be stressful. Can Dollar General break the anti-dollar store spell? Stock did rally two and three quarters percent today. Could be an arbiter of a turn. After the close, two winners report Broadcom, which just closed on its VMware acquisition, and Lululemon, which has become a serial beaten razor. Now, we own Broadcom for the Chapel Trust, and I have to wonder if CEO Hock Tan announces some projections that could really get the stock moving. Resumption of the old buyback, that wouldn't hurt either. As for Lulu, so many traders are afraid to own this stock because it's been red hot for so long, up another 19 points today. But this is a market that's not deterred by excellent past performance. Finally, there's so many bears when it comes to the travel thesis. You know my long on money, short on time ditty. I think it's still in vogue in the post-post-COVID era. And when you see the numbers from Vail, I think you'll like them. Here's the bottom line. I know that my pal, buddy, friend, David Faber, has seemed incredulous of late when I talk about a broadening bull. But this was some week for the huddled masses of stocks longing to be free of the bears. I bet next week will be more of the same. Let's take calls. Let's go to Tom in the Illini. Tom. Hi there, Jim. I'm a Tom, third generation up? holder. I'm a third generation holder of original McDonald's stock. My grandparents lived in the Des Plaines, Illinois town where Ray Kroc's first chain store started, and they began purchasing it when it went public in 1965. It's risen and done well since, and my plan has always been to hold it and reinvest the dividends. What's your overall take on McDonald's, and do you envision a split in the future at all? Don't know. They have an analyst meeting next week. Wouldn't it be great if they do a split? The companies these days don't want to do them. But you know what? I care about the earnings, and the earnings, I think, are terrific. You've got a good one. I say stay long. Perot's in California. Perot's. Hey, Jim. Happy Friday. How are you doing today? I, I'm doing well. How about you? Hey, pretty good. Excited about the, the game this weekend. Got my Niners going nervous, up against the nervous, Eagles. But... Nervous, 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 nervous. Can you believe this? Can you believe that the 49ers are favored by three points? They must know something. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyways, um, appreciate all you do. Wanted to get my, to my stock here. Um, this company, it's a car uh, service company. Uh, they do a lot of business. They have dealerships, and they also have um, a race team, uh, pretty well known. Just wanted to get your opinion on um, why their operating margins are declining over the last six quarters. Um, is Penske Automotive Group, PAG, still a buy? Yes. So look, it's up like more than 30 percent. It's probably the best in that group. I looked at AutoZone. I mean, I looked at CarMax this week. I looked at, at uh, you know, at Auto Nation. They're not doing as well as these guys. I say own them. And look, it's, not, it's not my cup of tea, but if you want to own one, that may be the one to own. Yes. Let's go to Sunny. Also, 
Everyone is from Illinois in this show tonight. Sunny in Illinois, sunny. Oh, we'll be calling yeah, Illinois it's soon. <laughs> it's right. It's your longtime fan, Sonny from uh, Chicago, a cold and wet state, man. How are you? I am doing well. Thank you for asking. How about you? Good, good. Hey, happy Friday and happy holidays to you, my friend. And our team, the best team yes, in the world. Yes. Hey, longtime fan, investment club member. Thank uh, you. You promised me you're going to work on your new book, Part Two to Get Rich. I, Carefully, I, I, I'm this wrecking every weekend. Are you kidding me? I wreck every single weekend. My wife loves it. <laughs> hey, listen, a big shout out to Nicole and the rest of your staff. They do a phenomenal N job. Nicole's monster. And from Philly, too. Yeah, and hey, a shout out to my sons, Zachary and Jimmy. They are huge fans of your show, and they are learning from you to invest for their. Uh, future uh, next generation potential. next generation next. watchers i love it let's make money next together generation. what do we got let's make money hey listen so the energy sector's been taking ahead as you know oil's come down from that you know almost 100 down to 74 dollars a barrel i know there's a lot of companies in the sector like devon and stuff that you're not a big fan of no i can't be right i now, like winners you like you think uh Kotera energy is a winner Jimmy? you bet because it's natural gas 50 percent natural gas 50 percent oil uh jordan runs it he knows what he's doing notice that stock never goes down i love that when things get better it is going to fly and i love your two kids for doing all the work and for single and for really for for mentioning our team i love that okay we saw the rally board now in a big way this week thanks to the belief that the fed might be done tightening and as more money comes into the market, I expect this broadening bull rally to continue till next week, through next week, maybe until the end of the year. Oh man, tonight, we're continuing our series on the stocks at work now that rates seemingly peak by taking a look at the consumer staple sector, sharing which names I'm watching at the end of the year. Then even in the face of a strong market, you have to be able to handle whatever the market throws at you. So that's why we're gonna play at my diversify. See if your portfolio needs a little touch up. And Jacob Solutions has become a complicated story, hasn't it? Mixed quarters, spin off non core critical missions business. I don't know. What do you make of it? Let's do the work. I'm going to talk to the CEO. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.